Hello guys, uh, Rick Malava here, and uh, in this short tutorial I'm going to demonstrate how to create this golf ball using a freely available plugin from Creative Crash called Geosphere. If you go to the Creative Crash website uh, and search for Geosphere, you'll find Geosphere 0.2. It's a fairly old plugin. It was originally written for Maya 4.0. I'm currently running Maya 2010, and this plugin seems to work fine. So I would assume that it will work with any version of Maya from 4 all the way up to and including Maya 2010. Uh, installation is fairly straightforward. If you uh, download the file, you'll get a zip file. You unzip that file, and in there will be uh, two folders and a readme file that describes the installation process. It's fairly straightforward. You just copy the two mail scripts in the uh, scripts folder to your Maya uh, folder and uh, inside of that Maya folder your your basically your your uh, default scripts folder just copy these two files into it uh, inside of your Maya folder you'll also have a folder that is the version of Maya that you're running if you go into that folder uh, there will be a preferences folder and if you go into the preferences folder there will be an icons folder and if you open that icons folder and copy these three files into it that's pretty much all that's required to, to install the script. To actually launch the script, uh, all you have to do is run a uh, is then run the mail command create geo sphere window, and that will open up this window. Uh, what I've done is basically created a, an, a shelf icon for it because I can see using this uh, uh, quite a bit. <clears throat> now the reason that I've decided to do this tutorial using the Geosphere command is you can create this golf ball in Maya using one of the platonic solids within Maya. Uh, there are five platonic solids basically they're just uh, geometric shapes and they are defined uh, thusly uh, based on the number of faces in each uh, geometric shape here. There's four in the tetrahedron, six faces in the cube, eight faces in the octahedron, and 12 faces in the dodecahedron, and 20 faces in the ico icosahedron. Uh, for those of you that played role-playing games a long time ago, these dice used to be used a lot for uh, generating random events. If you go uh, back into Maya and you go to create polygon platonic solids you can create a icosahedron and if I scale that up there you go there's a 20-sided icosahedron. The disadvantage in Maya is this is pretty much um, as high a frequency of these uh, uh, equilateral triangles as you can get in this in this model. The only way you can in increase the number of these is to uh, actually smooth this. <clears throat> I'll do that smooth here and then I'll change its method to linear and now you can see we're getting that uh, uh, equilateral triangle effect here and then to increase the frequency of these equilateral triangles and better approximate a sphere we can increase the number of subdivisions per edge and if I up that to four I get something like this and the problem you can probably see it hopefully right now as I tumble this around um, is it's not really the best approximation of a sphere there's clearly points in it and to demonstrate that, if I open up the Geosphere plugin and I create an icosahedron, you can create with this plugin a tetrahedron, three of the five platonic solids, a tetrahedron, octahedron, and an icosahedron. So if I select icosahedron uh, and then I set its frequency to one, you'll see if I hide this Maya polygon you see I get a icosahedron pretty much the same as what we get in Maya. 
The difference is if I go to increase the frequency of these equilateral triangles using this plug-in, I move the slider and set a frequency of 4. That's the same as subdividing each edge by 4 in Maya. And I create another icosahedron. You can see this is a much better approximation to a sphere than what we get with the Maya version. If I bring that Maya version back and I scale it, you can see the problem. It sort of pokes out. Oh, I'm scaling the wrong one. This is the Maya one. If I scale it out, you can see there the the problem. It's got uh, uh, points to it. It's not it's not smooth. They're flat patches with clear edges and and uh, pointy bits in it. Pointy bits. That's a technical term. So if I go back to the icosahedron uh, that I create using the Geosphere plugin, we get a much better approximation of a sphere to start. Still not perfect, but it's closer than what we get with Maya. Now to convert this into a golf ball, it's a pretty simple process. We just go and go into vertex mode, select all the vertices, and then we go to chamfer vertices, and then back to object mode and pick the chamfer, and in the chamfer nodes property box we up the width to 0.35 and that's a pretty close approximation of all of those uh, hexagons in here and then now if I go to face mode and I select all the faces and I turn uh, and I extrude those faces and then I turn uh, keep faces together off and we offset by point, uh, let's say, 0, 2. How's that look? That looks pretty good. And then we repeat that command. And now we'll uh, extrude it in Z inward. Oh, let's go uh, minus point zero 0.08. And then let's do another offset of point zero 0.02. And then let's go back to object mode, and if we smooth that, we should get a much closer, first of all, much closer approximation to a sphere, more uniform divots, and we pretty much create uh, that golf ball. So that's a, that's a method of creating a golf ball using that Geosphere plugin. I think there's a probably a lot more uh, applications of this plugin. I'm certainly going to keep it in my arsenal. Um, I think it creates a better approximation of a sphere than uh, smoothing an icosahedron uh, from in one of uh, Maya's platonic solids. And uh, uh, so there you go. I hope you find this, uh, I hope you found this useful and uh, uh, thanks a lot.